computer. Greetings, people of the internet. Today is Monday, the 7th of October, 2019, and this is the IPFS Developer UN Documentation and Developer User Experience Working Group. Um, this is our weekly meeting. You can find more about us in our repo, including information on notes on this call and how to join future calls at github.com slash IPFS slash docs. This is sort of an unusual week for our meeting. It's going to be a quick one um, because last week was a whole lot of Q4 planning. We got a tremendous amount done um, in terms of planning, but they are planning exercises. So we don't, frankly speaking, have a ton of progress to report for this week since we've been scaffolding ourselves for progress for the rest of Q4. Um, there are two one-off items. One is that Q4 planning. We did a massive Q4 planning session amongst the core team on Thursday. We captured all of our Q4 project epics, which are the sub points of our OKRs, into GitHub issues. And then we drafted a bunch of tasks, something like 100 different issues um, associated with each of those epics broke those off into bite-sized pieces. People of the internet, you will note that all of these have been t-shirt sized and ones that were particularly ripe for contributor contribution are labeled with help wanted. So we would love it if you took a look through those. Um, that gives us a very good overview of what we're gonna be up to for the rest of the quarter. Uh, the other really, really awesome thing that I am so pleased to report um, is that John Matthews will be joining us on the 4th of November as our new documentation and technical content strategist. Um, hooray! I'm like so happy, so happy. Um, he is joining us from the Aon Foundation. Um, so he has a lot of um, very, very relevant and wonderful topical experience. We are very lucky to have him. Um, he's going to be onboarding going to be doing sort of like the PL specific onboarding for a couple of days that week of 4th November. The following week, um, he'll be joining me in Colorado for some in-person close working, whatever that ends up being. Um, you know, anyone else is welcome to, to join the Colorado party, should you wish. Um, and then we will all be going to lab week. So it'll be um, an exciting whirlwind of a November for John. So um, he's going to try um, and join us on one of these calls sometime over the course of this month, um, schedule permitting, um, and is also doing a little bit of tentative work and just doing a, a little bit of documentation analysis before he joins on. So awesome stuff. Um, so if you've been following the notes, um, you'll notice that the format of our notes and our agenda has changed because um, our notes and agenda are associated with our, um, our quarterly OKR subtasks, and now we have new quarterly OKR subtasks. So the existing list has been replaced with a new one, and for the purposes of this meeting, um, let's just run through them very quickly. So um, recurring item number one, docs beat on launch. Um, we spec'd all of this out in the GitHub issues under Epic 1A. There's a link in the notes to this if you want to just see all of the subtasks that we've initially spec'd out in GitHub as being part of this uh, beta launch. Obviously, this is all subject to change. This is the, the set of initial um, issues was just to give us an idea of what um, you know, sort of what we're getting ourselves into through the size of the effort um, and capturing the key things that we know that we're going to have to do. Um, a side note on that, Chris is currently spiking on this and hopes to have a sort of a very, very minimum ViewPress site um, for us to use for user testing in Colorado on the 16th of October, which is pretty great. Um, following on from that, we have a we have a an epic for putting together a, a deprecation plan for the docs beta, um, not deprecating it this quarter, but as we're accumulating items and we know of things that we know we're going to need to deprecate, capturing those in a way that makes it easier for us to do it when we do do it. Those are all in GitHub issues under Epic 1B. Um, furthermore, Epic 2A, following down the list, this will be pretty quick, is um, metrics definition and collection for the beta site. We wanted to capture that as its own Epic since we wanted to get into place very definitely, very clearly what we wanted to gather um, metrics on in the new site. So that's spec'd out under Epic 2A. That is going to obviously lag a little bit behind Epic 1A, which has actually launched the docs beta, but we wanted to capture that in its own issue. Um, following on from that is adding a, and is this helpful feedback mechanism to the beta site um, that mirrors what we've got on the existing site, but has a little bit more of an opportunity for the user to give better feedback, more useful feedback. 
Um, that's an Epic 2B. And Eric, you like already did a lot of the visuals for this. Yeah, I researched, uh, again, some other good examples, you know, you can see like Google, Google has a super simple box, um, Apple as well, you know, surprise, surprise. But uh, the, the super simple approach, I think, is going to net us the most, it might net us more interaction than click no, and then it spawns five other buttons for you to pick from, you know. Um, so, you know, very, very few people do take, do bother to, to click when they like or dislike something. So it's super critical to make it um, just a frictionless process. And hopefully it's pretty much ready to be implemented. Um, probably just in the beta, you know, I wouldn't bother, you know, doing that code for our current site. Yeah, and the only the only outstanding issue I think open for Chris is um, the length of the text box and how that's going to be functionally captured on our end if we're text limited because it's going to be like maybe an event capture and metrics. Um, but I think as far as I understand, that's the only thing outstanding. So sweet, sweet. Uh, link to the widget is in the notes. Um, following on, usability testing. Um, we spec this out to a certain degree under Epic 2C, realizing that we're going to be testing a thing that we're building and we can't fully really get an idea of the specifics that we want to test yet. Um, we did, however, under Epic 2C capture a number of things that we knew that we wanted to test on, you know, namely at its very basic, just a, a, a very high level um, overall usability review and um, one-on-one -on -one usability review of the site that's likely going to launch a whole bunch of other user testing efforts. Um, that said, we are going to be doing in-person testing on the 16th of October in Boulder, Colorado as part of an IPFS meetup. Um, that is most likely going to take the form of going over the new uh, navigational structure that, um, that we've worked on over the last quarter, at the end of the last quarter. Although that said, it's subject to change really depending on the sort of audience that we get at that event. Um, we have an item for features voting that's under Epic 2D. Um, what this is, is having the world at large um, help us prioritize. We have a prioritized features list that we arrived at at the end of the last quarter, but we want to make sure that people have a good say in there. Um, so that's putting together, using a third party platform, some sort of features voting page where people can rank what they want to see first in the new docs. Um, that should be a fairly simple task because it's sort of a standalone that gets its own epic. Um, Eric, do you want to talk about the ecosystem audit, other than the fact that we captured it in issues? <laughs> uh, it, it, it's just the realization that we have, that people find out about IPFS in any number of ways, you know. Uh, and, you know, is that, is that Google, is that a medium post, is that talking to someone, is that docs.ipfs.io uh, and proto school. So, uh, I, th I think it would be helpful to have uh, just a, a simple sentence about each one of those uh, various places, you know, find and poke away at, at the different places and then see, uh, you know, kind of identify what uh, in a bullet point form, what each offers uh, in a, you know, uniquely that, that um, others maybe don't or do to varying degrees. And then just kind of, I, I'm in visualizing because I'm visual. Uh, a uh, maybe just a, a quick little diagram that where you can see at a glance the IPFS uh, education ecosystem, and uh, and hopefully that'll be like a baseline for us to make decisions about how you know where where to have smart interactions between different points, uh, touch points, and uh, and you know avoid overlap. Uh, and just be smart about where we put content and what the content is like. And I think this is something, you know, for a, for a four-year-old, five-year-old organization, you know, it's the right time to be doing something like this. Stuff like this tends to emerge organically over time, and then it takes a, a certain concerted effort to actually analyze the field of what's been created and, and unify it under a single single voice, a single path, you know, a single pathway approach, so on and so forth. Um, we hope to do our best to free up as much time as you have to be able to complete that work. So if you are listening and want to take on any issues um, in any anything, um, particularly in the content improvement area, like I said, please look for things that are labeled help wanted. That would help us greatly. 
Um, that brings us to the next item, content improvement. Um, in Q4, we've split this out into two different areas. One is content improvement that was driven by user feedback, um, either direct user feedback or things we received from metrics, things we've inferred from metrics, that's 3A. And then also working through the backlog of existing issues that we inherited from the old doc site, from the old website repo, so forth. And those are under Epic 3B. Um, we'd like to prioritize Epic 3A, obviously, because they came directly from users. That's why we have these in two separate buckets. Um, we did close two small issues this week. It was a slow week due to planning. Um, so following on from that is a is a really a close reading style content audit of our entire documentation material that we've got live right now um, and guidance under next steps. This is also a perfect means for onboarding John. So he's actually starting on this a little bit already. Um, and the the way for how we're going to be doing this is spec out in GitHub issues under Epic 3C. Um, and then Terry, Proto School and IPFS stuff. Yeah, so in, yeah, so our, in our, our, I don't know. I don't know what. I'm going to put myself on mute them. Does that help? Interesting. OK. Um, in our Q4, that's what we just started, right? Our Q4 OKRs for the docs team, we have a category that is phrased as kind of taking the content from IPFS camp and making it useful in our documentation. And that includes a number of line items that are related to Proto School, um, which will be mostly Jill and I working on that. And then one that's related to the documentation, like the documentation site itself, which would be a new hire working on um, for the most part but we can all be flagging issues there. So we're still working on that review, going through all of the IPFS camp content to see what will fit. So that's still in progress. Um, one thing, I've been away for the last two weeks, so have made no progress on this during that time. Um, but Jill just finished a first draft of our next Proto School tutorial, which is super exciting. So he um, built the one on the files API, but not MFS, which we already have in a separate tutorial, the other part of the files API. Um, so there's a draft there, which we're very open to feedback on or tweaks. Um, I'll be going through that. It's just a first stab and I'll be going through it to look at wording, um, and all of that stuff, but feedback is welcome. And then we'll be hopefully wrapping that up within the next week or two so we can get it live. Um, and then I'll be, when I have a little bit of time digging back into going through the IPFS camp content, because we have a lot of really good fodder there for other tutorials. And certainly Jill and I can build some of it, but we're also very open to volunteers from the broader IPFS community um, who's interested. And we have a lot of documentation about how to build a tutorial. So please feel free to reach out to me. I'm Terry, if you have any questions about how to contribute. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. I think that's pretty much it for um, for this week. So thank you for joining us. Anybody out there in the internet, this is an open call and we would be pleased to have you on the synchronous call if you'd like as well. Like I said, any of the info on this call can be found at github.com slash IPFS slash docs. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time. I am going to stop recording.